Hello and welcome to Australian Transformers Weekly. We are bringing you Transformers news from around the world with Australian accents. This is episode 205. That's a lot of episodes. We are recording live on Thursday, November 28th, 2019. It's a bit of an unusual record night because, um, well, we've all been busy and there hasn't actually been that much news. So this week, we're going to be talking about some new Masterpiece Prime news. Optimus Prime himself is coming to Australia next year and uh, another convention as well that I go to. Uh, and there's more Constructicons than you can form a Devastator with. All that and more is coming up after this. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jason. Joining me this week, we have Bradley coming to us all the way from Perth. How are you doing, Bradley? I'm doing well. Thank you, Jason. And it's great to be back. And I was I just noticed I'm huge compared to you two on the uh, free shot. But that's cool. <laughs> huge. He's huge. Yeah. Well, we're huge. just focusing on the, the important things. He's the biggest podcaster ever. He's, <laughs> he's, he's the most vitally important part of the podcast. No, I'm, I'm Big just, news. I'm going to stop doing that. Yes, that is fake news. Um, and uh, coming to us from Adelaide. So we have, we, we've got, I think there's one of us in each time zone. Oh, wait, no, there's no one in Queensland, but that's okay. That's actually 30 years ago. Uh, there's yeah. one of us in each national time zone. Uh, and uh, Max, coming to us from Adelaide, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. It's been a hot minute since I was last on, but turns out that's what uni does to you at this point. Turns out that our definition of hot minutes uh, differ. Uh, it's, been, it's been a long time. <laughs> uh, must be some Sydney term I'm not used to. Yeah, it must be. It must be. Uh, or vice versa. Um, yeah, no, it has been a while. You've been quite busy um, doing stuff. Yeah, and just things. study. Not, not much else, really. But stuff, it is, it is good to things. actually be back on the show and finally be done with uni for a year. So with any luck, I, well, not with any luck, but yes, I can actually consistently make it now which is nice that's good it's uh it is just in time for us to actually say that this is probably the last show for the year but uh, <laughs> we will see how we go um so uh, look i i'm actually i'm going away next weekend i'm i'm actually off to hong kong i'm hoping that i might find some uh, earth rise hanging around in hong kong i'm gonna be in china for a week and then i'm off to london for christmas so um if there is a podcast that goes on in the next few weeks it will not be me hosting it but that's no reason that's no reason not to come along it's no reason not to turn up and no reason not to listen so yeah we'll see how we go it's a pretty good reason though i mean like you know there's that um Bradley, what have you been up to? It's been a couple of weeks since you've been on. Actually, it's been a couple of episodes since you've been on. Sorry, it's been about a month. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, nothing too exciting. Just generally adding to the collection and uh, adding to the wish list as well. <laughs> I've been. Uh, I've. I've. I've not been adding much to the collection uh, in the last few weeks. Just. Uh, I've been. I've been spending a lot of money on other things, um, and they're just starting to. All these other things are starting to just stack up, and I need to, I need to stop spending some money. Um, <laughs> my my current project is uh, I don't know if you, I don't know if you can oh, you, you can just see it on my I've done the TV weather girl thing now as well. Um, I've moved the middle shelf into place in the study, which means that um, I've got a little bit more space on the shelves behind me. But I've also uh, like Max, I see you've got you've got your uh, IKEA Kallax shelf behind you. I've moved mine out of the study. I actually have an empty wall in the study at the moment. And I'm going to replace it with Billy bookcase, just uh, more like the ones behind me because uh, I appreciate the shallower depth. Uh, and so you've got you've got quite a lot of shadow on your yeah. Uh, my, your and it's not really good for actually displaying stuff. It yeah, and yeah, yeah. It turns out. Dark. Oh. Yeah, ter turns out the old Calyx might not be the greatest for displaying things, at least in a room where the uh, light comes at you from above, which most rooms do. Um, so yeah, I will probably be probably be updating some of the shelving arrangements in my room in the next uh, probably in the next couple of months. We'll see how we go. Probably in probably in the new year. I'm not going to bother doing it in the next week or so. Um, but yeah, no. So I've been I've been putting a lot of effort into just sort of trying to clean the place up because I'm going to be leaving and uh, going away for Christmas and leaving my housemate in it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, should we, uh, should we talk a little bit about some Transformers? 
think we should. Yeah, right. A, a little bit. Like, there's some there's some stuff to talk about, right? We're going to move swiftly on and get to the news. Straight into news. Hasbro news. That will take us into some news. What news comes from by yonder? A couple of Australian stories to actually a few Australian stories to head off this week. Uh, there's been new siege figures discovered at Australian retail for the first time. Now, uh, this is it's it's a little bit unusual. We've been lamenting we've been lamenting the uh, lack of siege figures all over the all over the country most of this year. We seem to get wave one quite late. We got wave two quite late, and then they've sort of been playing catch up. This one's quite interesting. So we have seen Spinister. And if I just hit the button there, Crosshairs. Now, um, we've seen Spinister and Crosshairs, both deluxe figures in, uh, in later later Siege Waves. Uh, they have turned up at Australian Retail this week at Big W. Now, of course, Crosshairs is a repaint of... Crosshairs is a repaint of Ironhide. You could also say he's a repaint of Ratchet, although we didn't get Ratchet officially I in think Australia. Also, uh, is he not also a slight remold with a new head? Yes, he's definitely got a new head on him. Like um, Ratchet and Ironhide had, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of very similar looking G1 heads with their paint job. But yes, no, um, uh, Crosshairs definitely has a definitely has a, a different head sculpt. And uh, Spinister is a new a new um, mold. So uh, mm-hmm. we haven't we haven't seen his mold before in Siege, and we're probably not going to see it again. He might turn up again in Earthrise. We'll see how we go. Um, they are at Big W stores and. I I mentioned on I, I mentioned on Twitter that uh, we're making up for uh, I mentioned on Twitter that we're making up for some of our early lacking uh, lacking in Siege and uh, uh, Ryan Edmonds from the uh, Action Figure Blues podcast responded and said oh but I've bought all of them at retails retail in Australia I'm like you're not in Sydney so mm. um, if you're if you're in Sydney like we we were very very poorly served to wave one because it mostly went to toy world stores and we don't have that chain uh, in Sydney. If you're in somewhere like somewhere like Melbourne, then yeah no um you may have actually seen the entire siege range come out at various stores around you. Um, but anyway, they, so these guys are new. They are deluxe figures, so there should be a RRP of about thirty five bucks. As always. Don't pay thirty five dollars for them. Try to do a price match, um, especially especially this weekend. If you are watching the podcast live, which you're probably not anyway, but because uh, no one no one knew we were actually doing it live tonight. But uh, the Black Friday deals are starting this weekend, and they will usually go on for uh, go on for a few at least a few days. And there's Cyber Monday as well, so. Um, Black Friday is a, a sort of an American shopping thing that uh, has come to Australia in in recent years with a vengeance this year, I would say. And so there's a lot of companies doing Black Friday deals. Keep an eye out for some cheap Transformers um, deluxe figures and see if you can price match them uh, if you find a big W that has these guys in stock or just go and order them online. Like they'll probably be like 15 or 20% off on uh, eBay or on Amazon if you if you play your cards right. Mm. Um, I should also say my friend uh, actually cited these guys on Monday at a uh, Maya store, and I'm kicking right. myself because I didn't uh, didn't get him to pick them up for me. And I caught him up this morning, and she said they're all gone. Yeah, surprise. So, uh, yeah. so, so that makes it uh, they're at Maya and at Big W stores. So, yeah, yep. Get Good into stuff. those stores. <laughs> mm, definitely. The other thing that has come out in Australia this week is uh, the reissue McDonald's Changeables <laughs> toys. Yeah. Now, these aren't these are not technically Transformers, but over the years, I believe it's uh, well accepted that Transformers fans have adopted them as their own. Uh, McDonald's Changeables are uh, basically some fast food items that look like they've been served by McDonald's, and they. Uh, they've 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 been very popular over the years. They're not that hard to get a hold of. Like if you if you go to most Transformers meetups or Supernova or, or any shops like that, you'll probably find a bunch of them hanging around for a few dollars a piece. Now, McDonald's is feeling a little bit nostalgic about their Happy Meal toys this year, and so they've brought back uh, either fifteen or sixteen of them. Um, the numbers go up to sixteen, but we've not cited one of the numbers yet, I believe. <laughs> and uh, so two of them are. Changeables. Uh, the rest are things like My Little Pony and so on. Mm. They are not straight up reissues. No, so they are not. 
The, the photo that we've got on photo that we've got on on screen here shows the the new changeables toy on the left and the the old changeables toy of which it is claiming to be a reissue on the right. So there's a few differences. The bun doesn't have the sesame seeds anymore, and all the cheese hanging off it is now lettuce. So <laughs> the, the new changeable is uh, the new changeable a healthy option. Much yeah, much much healthier. Uh, I've also just noticed that we've lost Max, so we'll we'll see how we'll see yeah, how he, go. he vanished a few minutes ago. Yeah, he, he was having some internet issues. Uh, so yeah, so the new changeables toy is a lot healthier, and um, uh, yeah, and it's a it's a smoother bun, and it's actually quite different. It's we were sitting around comparing them at uh, comparing them over dinner the other night, and someone said it looked like a knockoff. Uh, oh. like, a, like, like a cheap, a cheap and nasty knockoff, and it kind of does, right? Like, because it's not really much like the original toy at all, except for the fact that it shares the same transformation. So, like, mm, who knows? We'll, we'll we'll see. The um, the other, the other changeable toy is technically one that I believe never actually got issued here in the first place, which is the uh, the Happy Meal box, which um, turns into a dinosaur. So technically, he's a Dinobot. <laughs> uh, or maybe maybe he's a dino box. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. And yeah, so yeah, te technically that one never came out in Australia, and so this is its uh, apparently first issue. Although, if you look at uh, if you look at people's changeable collections, they've got this one in there as well. Um, I was just I was just observing a photograph that we took at a Melbourne meetup a couple of years ago, where there was just a pile of changeables all over the floor, and this guy was definitely in them. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I I remember these guys in uh, what the early nineties, late eighties. Mm -hmm. I think there were three. There was the burger, uh, French there's fries, a lot and a more drink. Than that. There's a uh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot more than that. There's a, there's also yeah. You are right. There's definitely fries. I think there's about five or six. Um, I was at uh, I was at Michael Vella's house last week, and he actually had obtained. From John Ryan as well, a friend friend of the show. He hasn't been on in a long time. Uh, but from John Ryan, Michael had obtained the changeables display case, which had slots for like six or seven or eight changeables in it. So like, oh, there's no. definitely a lot of lot of them around. Like some of them could just be like redos over the years, but uh, uh, yeah, no, there's plenty plenty of them. Oh, so if you do want to obtain a changeable, they are they are number one. Number one is the burger. And number five is the Happy Meal box. Uh, now, those are the changeables. There are there's up to sixteen of them, um, so you can ask the staff for a particular number. And the best thing is that you don't actually have to go in and partake of a Happy Meal. You can actually just go in and ask the staff to buy a Happy Meal toy, and they are two dollars each. Oh, nice. So yeah, so if you if you if you want to do that, just ask them. You just say you'd like to buy toys number one and number five, uh, and you should be good to go. How do these guys scale with bot bots? Has there, has there been comparison? Like oh, they're these? they're probably maybe slightly larger than bot bots actually, but only very slight. Like they they scale well with them. Like you yeah. can certainly you can certainly have Megatron eat a burger or something like that. <laughs> Lovely. Finally, after all these years, Mega Drunk and have a burger. Finally. I, I mean, look, that's it. I mean, it explains why he's so cranky all the time, right? Oh, well, if I don't get my burger, I'm pretty cranky. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, so am I. You may, you may have heard of this man. His name is Peter Cullen. Um, he, he plays a, um, he plays a, a character that you may have heard of. Um, called the Predator. Yeah, no, he's called uh, Ironhide. Oh um, yes, of course. Yeah. 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 So yeah, Peter Cullen, very famous for voicing Ironhide. Strangely strangely enough, uh Ironhide has proven so popular over the years that a new convention in Sydney in January 2020 is bringing bringing Mr. Cullen to Sydney. Now, Brad says that he's returning to Australia. And speaking of returning, I'm just I'm just going to insert Max back into the stream. Welcome back, Max. Hi. Hi. I didn't. I didn't spend the past five minutes swearing at the computer. <laughs> oh, you, you, well, you probably well, should have. You, you might have gotten back online faster. No, no. I, yeah. I spent the past five minutes swearing at the NBN. So. Yeah. Fair oh, enough. fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we we were just commenting on um how Peter Cullen is well known for playing Ironhide, 
and uh, so Go Atomic is bringing the voice of Ironhide to Sydney in January 2020. And if you would like to get, um, if you'd like to maybe get your G1 Ironhide toy signed, you will be able to go along to the convention and purchase a token to meet him. Um, now, Go Atomic is Go Atomic is a new convention. We actually don't have that much information on them. They appear to be run from a run by a collectible store in Moore Park in Sydney uh, called Goat Nation, and Goat Nation is located quite close to the, the venue for uh, Go Atomic, which is the Horden Pavilion, which I'm happy about because it's actually a walking distance from my house for that weekend. Oh. Um, well, that's so awfully convenient. It is, it, is, it is awful and convenient. It is awfully convenient. Um, so, yeah, look, uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting my chance to meet Peter Cullen. Now, this is not the only convention to announce Peter Cullen's attendance this week. The other one is TF Nation in Birmingham in August 2020, which to which I will be I'll be gladly attending later in the, later in the year. So I might get a chance to meet Peter Cullen twice in one year. Now, it's not yet known. We've we've tried to get in contact with uh, with Goat Nation and sort of ask what their plans are. It's not yet known how much it will cost to see Peter Cullen. So I haven't bought tickets for the convention yet because I feel I don't want to buy tickets if there's a chance that I might not actually be able to purchase the, uh, they call them autograph tokens. Um, oh. And so so the, the autograph token will cost, you know, it will be a separate price to attending the convention. Now, I will just say also that the convention, for a brand new convention, like this is not Supernova and it is not Oz Comic Con, but for a brand new convention, these guys have got a really interesting guest list. Uh, they have uh, Brad Deriff, who uh, I believe Brad was in the A team back in the eighties, um, but he's also been a, he's also been a, a bit of a, a common guest in a lot of sci-fi shows. He was definitely in Babylon Five. He's been in Star Trek, um, and you know, th- he's been in a lot of things since then. Uh, Brad Dourif is coming along, and uh, Giancarlo Giancarlo Esposito is uh, also coming along, and. He's quite a he's quite a big name in a lot of uh, a lot of the sort of genre shows that I've watched over the years as well. So um, I think uh, it, it seems to me that Go Atomic is actually shaping up to be quite the expo. Uh, and obviously, you know, there'll be retailers selling things, and I suspect Goat Nation might be uh, might be mainly gearing up to sell their own uh, collectibles at the show as well. But uh, like that's that's a pretty impressive list of uh, list of guests for a new convention. Yeah, no kidding. Well, it's something that I'd never really heard about until it was an announcement. And for them to just sort of come in almost out of nowhere and, you know, put together a show seemingly of this caliber is really impressive. Yeah. Look, I'm going to be really interesting to, I'm going to be really interested to go along to the show and see what it's like and how it's run. It is, um, the we should actually say it is the 18th to the 19th of January in 2020. So, it's kind of still on school holidays. There's, you know, it's a bit of a, it's it's going to be a probably a stinking hot day. I'm assuming, um, being in the middle of January. But uh, yeah, really, really, really looking forward to uh, really looking forward to meeting meeting the man. And uh, I don't know what to I don't know what to get him to sign. But I happen to have this. I happen to have this sitting here. Let me just. Uh, Flip the camera over. I do happen to have a uh, a Transformers collection uh, number zero box sitting here, handy uh, handily waiting me to pick it up and take it with me to the convention. So, nice. Yeah. Well, well you're um, going to get him to sign your butt or something. No, no. Uh, oh well. Do you know? Do you know why, Bradley? Why? Because you know, I'm not you. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we might even we might even see if we can even get a recording of Peter Cullen saying something to something something to greet us or something. Something. That's probably, that's probably illegal, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Depends on how much money you slide him. It, it does. Yeah. Well, I, so, TF Nation. Uh, so, uh, people are sort of like, "Oh, great! I get to go along and, and, and meet Peter Cullen." Like, TF Nation charges seventy five seventy five pounds for the entire weekend attending the convention and not normally under normal circumstances you can get you can 
just meet any guest you want. They don't charge for they don't charge for autographs. They don't charge for hugs or chats or anything like that. Cullen is going to be different though. Um, mm. So they will be selling. Um, they'll be sell, they'll be selling additional um, spots in queues and panels and and things like that that he's attending. And the most expensive thing, which I'll probably do because like I'm flying over to the other side of the planet to attend, is the leader pack, which is 220 pounds. Oh, now that's that's three times the price of actually attending the convention. But you definitely get to meet Peter Cullen and get things signed and you get uh, reserved seating at the panels that he's going to be sitting on. So, like, I'm probably going to do that. Um, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to do that. But I also wonder whether or not it might end up being... Uh, so I think I think, I think think um, Go Atomics tickets are, you know what? It's right here. Why don't we find out? <laughs> there's, a, there's, a big, there's a big button. There's a big button on on the screen that says "Buy Ticket." What can go? What can possibly go wrong? Bra- Let's help Jason fight? buy his holiday live on stream. Yeah, <laughs> like what? What can possibly go wrong? Like we, we've done this before. Um, I mean, you sorry, can give okay. Card info. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> So the uh, what are we looking at? So the combo weekend two day tickets, uh, fifty five dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, plus they they have a they have a dance party going on that night as well. So you know about a hundred dollars for the weekend and stuff. So like it, that's not going to include Peter Cullen. Like the token for Peter Cullen will probably be another hundred or two hundred dollars, I suspect as well. Fifty bucks um, flat. Fifty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, we will see. We'll see how we go. But. Um, Either way, uh, kudos to um, Goat Nation. We'll be, I'll be going and wandering over and trying to have a chat with, chat with them and see how they're, um, how they're going to be running things. Uh, yeah, see, mm. see what happens. They are nearby. Would it, would so anyway. I thought, I thought they would have had the, um, the token prices up by now for, um, Peter Cullen. I yeah. See, this is what I find interesting is that TF Nation is not selling anything yet, but they've put the prices up for things. Um, oh, okay. Go Nation, Nation has put the ticket price up, but they've said that tokens will be on sale later or closer to the closer to the time. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll be watching anxiously and probably attending. So, if you're in Sydney or if you want to attend and you want to come visit Sydney, um, you know, do do let us know. We will probably arrange a Transformers meetup in the area uh, soon, sometime after the convention as well. Yeah, it'll definitely be cool to see how it all pans out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, let's move on to something else that's panning out, which is um, this uh, this mysterious thing that appeared on um, Big Bad Toy Store earlier nice this segue. week. Coming cool. soon, uh, MP49 Black Convoy. Nice. Uh, yeah, so Very we've been wondering... Yes. Sorry? It's a very little restraint from BBTS, but I suppose we all knew it was coming anyway. So this is the this is not the first time that uh, BBTS has posted something like this um, with this official retailer um, logo in the middle saying, hey, this is coming soon, and naming it. The last one was um, Burning Convoy, which is not yet released, but will be soon. And, um, yeah, so, so they've got this sort of logo arrangement in the middle of the in the middle of the screen it actually looks like the pins that they now give away with um masterpiece imports uh so yeah mp49 black convoy is it going to be a straight up black nemesis repaint of mp44 or might it be a little li- <laughs> like Brad, Brad, bradley's just shaking his head <laughs> he's like no it's going to be a nemesis um, well, yeah. what you're asking is is Takara going to be creative in any way, shape, or form? And hey, 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 that's that's not fair. I mean, like MP44 is a thing of beauty. Yeah, um, maybe not not creative at that price. Beauty. It should be yeah, imaginative. We'll or say instead. Mm-hmm. So, is this is this is this going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back? MP44, very expensive, very good. Many people, yeah, if they. they Many people have purchased it grudgingly because they wanted that new Optimus Prime. Now, this one is not a 44B. It is its own number, which has people a little bit hopeful that maybe it'll be something a little bit more special or a little bit different. Mm. Personally, I think they're done with the, the letter 
modifications and now the um the only modification they put on numbers is the plus version um and so yeah mp49 is probably just gonna be a, a, a nemesis repaint i suspect but uh it, I could be more. That it's, it did get annoying you know you have where you have the seekers listed as all subsets the same number you know, yeah so yeah yeah it's crazy if I, if I stick to this change it'll be really good yeah agreed yeah well um black convoy is just a black optimus prime it's not Ne- 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 it's not. Ne- it's not. Prime. Well, so uh, well. I mean, like usually, so usually the prime. Yeah. You know, so usually, usually the the Nemesis versions are black convoy in Japanese or or black whatever. So uh, like, okay. um, black black hot rodders, uh, like black Rodimus or, or whatever, like that. So like usually for the masterpieces, like the black version is the Nemesis version. Um, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how we go. Uh, no, no idea when any any anything is coming out for it, but uh, apparently more information will be available on December the fifth. So keep keep an eye peeled on the interwebs on that day and see how you go. Mm. All right. Uh, other than that, this week has actually seen the release of two masterpiece figures, and this is really creepy as I open this because it just looks like I've like opened a picture <laughs> of a spider. Uh, so. Masterpiece Bumblebee was re- was delayed um, from a month or so ago, and he's made it out the same week as Black Arachnia. Now, uh, we've got some hands-on photos from uh, for uh, Black Arachnia here, but um, Masterpiece Bumblebee uh, did not make the photo shoot. Oh, well. Now, so I've spoken with someone who has um, Black Arachnia, and they say that the... The legs can snap or can like come out a little bit, but they're on they're on ball joints and stuff, so um, they're easily reattached. That's better than them snapping off. But the transformation is quite straightforward and simple. And God, that thing looks creepy as fuck. Yes, it does. Um, <laughs> like it's so it's so, uh, and it's also it's because it's got that sort of organic shiny look bef- uh, on the body of it. It just looks really really gross. Um, yeah. But yeah, so Masterpiece Black Arachnia is here. If you've ordered her from retailers, uh, the orders should be shipping into Australia in the next week or so, and you should be able to get it there. Looks, uh, that spider just looks so real. <laughs> yeah, and well, like, like it, it looks, it doesn't look real because like it's enormous and it has like gold legs. Yeah, but it also looks kind of gross. Yeah, kind of creepy. Like, but... If you just glanced at it, like you, you wouldn't realize it's not really okay. Maybe now you would, but yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you prank someone with that and put the spider mode on the wall, then you legally forfeit the right to own Black Arachnia because that shit's going to get <laughs> smashed. <laughs> yeah, probably right. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, look, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to adding her to the collection. I'm not really much of a Beast Wars fan, but um, I've been getting into the Beast Wars masterpiece figures, so I'm happy for that. Yeah, we still got to get you to watch the Beast Wars TV series, haven't we? Um, you probably don't, but uh, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> oh wow! So she's got the one-off shot with the golden eyes. Hmm. Um, so do you guys have do you guys have Bumblebee or Black Arachnia on order? No, not me. Um, yeah, the sorry, sorry, Max. I've just realized that you fell out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, why is Max not answering? Oh, wait a minute, he's, a he's yeah. not here. <laughs> Living the first <laughs> country, apparently. Yeah. Um, I have neither on order, not for you know lack of thinking that they're they look very good because they both do look pretty good. It's just, um, you know, I have a bumblebee and I'm trying to save money so. But not, so it's, not, it's not a knock on the figures, really. No. I've been wanting to collect the Beast Wars Masterpiece figures because they look great and I do like Beast Wars. It's just, at the moment, there's still too few to sort of start a collection because they all look... I think all the Masterpiece Beast Wars are the same scale, but they're still out of scale with the traditional Beast Wars toys like 20 years ago. Um, so I've been yeah. looking at them quite closely. But at the same time, I haven't actually bought any of them yet. The thing for me with Masterpiece Beast Wars is that it's a section of a franchise which I've got like, no attachment to whatsoever, essentially. But yeah. I just I get so much of a kick out of watching the coverage of these figures when they come out because yeah. you know, the Masterpiece line in general is going you know in leaps and bounds nowadays. But Beast Wars is just seems to be where they're really pushing it, and the stuff I've been able to pull off 
you know, just over the past few years of this line has been insane. Yeah. Yeah. So just looking at the moment, the uh, the stand with the uh, the web that uh, you can attach it to, uh, very, very, very impressive. Um, hmm. Although I think, it, I think it comes uh, with a stand. It does. Yes. It's uh, it's it's part of the part of the package. So um, sort of variable. It's 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 quite it's quite interesting. Um, the this photo set, the early photos were really, really good and high res and detailed and well lit. And you get to this, you get to some of these, and this one, it's like it, they forgot to focus the camera. Yeah, that, that, that's like, actually just a shot of a nineteen nineties black arachne figure for comparison. <laughs> actually, you know, what? I think I know what this is. I think this is actually a screen cap from a video. I was going to yeah. say, if you um color change that, that that would be Nightbird because it's, with the blur, it looks like she's got a covered face covered mouth C certainly could be yes all right let's move on uh black arachnia will be here in a, a week or two um and in a little while so will these guys um studio series 53 and 54 mix master and scavenger uh we've got official photographs of them it all starts fairly innocently enough with a Fairly nice looking truck mode for Mixmaster, but um, the wheels soon fall off as soon as he turns into a robot and he looks like a uh, Bayformers robot. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh no, Very I, much so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had the um, original Voyager from um, Revenge of the Fallen, and that was a triple changer. Is this still a triple changer? I got no um, idea. Yeah, that, Why, that, that triple changer gimmicks that really screwed over that figure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, this. What that was his third insane. mode? Um, it was like a cannon. Yeah. It just had like a little spring-loaded launcher, and it looked pretty cool. But this this shot we're looking at now just looks weird. It's like you can't really tell where he ends and the display stand begins. It, like, it, it, it just looks like he's sitting down shot. chilling. Yeah. It just, it just looks the really odd. The, the design in and of itself... This particular one doesn't really lend itself to, um, you know, all that emotive for yeah. posing. I suppose you could say it's just a weird, lanky shaped thing. Yeah, and there's nothing especially wrong with that. Um, it's, I mean, it depends on your perspective, really. But it just, it is what it is. But yeah, in this case, it does make it sort of hard to really convey much for yeah. posing. Yeah, I, I look. We, we've talked about them a couple of times. I don't, I don't really. I don't really care for the the Revenge of the Fallen Devastator. I don't really care for the Studio Series ones. Um, yeah. There's a couple yeah, in, couple more photos with Scavenger. Excellent. They are they are looking quite impressive um, compared to what's come before. But uh, I just kind of I I struggle to care. But, yeah. yeah for, for me, it is yeah. just movie constructor cons. Like, yeah, kind of like they were just wedged in there as a, an afterthought in Revenge of the Fallen. It's kind of like. Yeah. yeah, and it's, it's kind of a shame, but I think that's going to be a turn off for a lot of people. You know, even still ten years down the track, it's people still really don't like that. But yeah. then the, you have, you know, this thing that's a big turn off for lots of people. Um, when clearly a lot of love has gone into producing these figures. Yeah, look, uh, look they're, they're gonna they're gonna sell. They'll be fine. Um, I think they'll be I think they'll be okay to uh, you know make whatever they're expecting to make on sales. But like, just won't really love it. Um, the one the one thing that I think is. The one thing that I think these figures and these designs should actually get credit for is for not always just having a bipedal robot. Um, yeah. Like, like we're, we're looking at Scavenger who, like, he's a unicycle. Um, and, yeah, like, he just sort of moves around on, on one wheel with uh, a couple of arms. But the thing is that by robbing him of his sort of bipedal form, we don't really have that much of a – we don't really have that much of a – familiar look or anything to connect with the character on or, or even fear the character right like he doesn't look fearsome he's a decepticon he doesn't look fearsome or angry or nasty it's just sort of like what the fuck is that <laughs> it, it does rob the figure of a lot of what it can do yeah yeah you know, studio series stuff but you know just standard bipedal form lends emotion to the posing um and this doesn't really it's just he, you can move his arms and that's about it yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just like a static piece. You can, you know, I don't think you can even make him stand up properly. I had the uh, Revenge of the Fallen of this guy, and you couldn't pose him. All you could do is just have him sort of standing on his with his hands like that, 
mm. sitting, and then you had to sort of delicately balance him. So he'll be standing like that on his hands, sort of like inverse gorilla or something. And then you got his other tire on the ground, and then you just sort of have to put it on the shelf like that, and then just back away slowly. <laughs> he doesn't lend it doesn't lend himself to uh, action shots. No, I mean, like, you sort of can if you lean him on something, but, yeah. yeah. Um, now, we talked about a couple of weeks ago how uh, the prototype Devastator had shown up at a trade show, <laughs> and it did cause it caused a little bit of a kerfuffle uh, when it went around. Yeah. i got to say, it's looking much better in this case in that, like, I'm at least aware of what it is. Um yeah, so but we're, there's we're, shapes you can identify here. Yeah, so so we're we're, we're looking at well, we're looking at uh, Devastator as appeared at a Dutch comic convention last weekend, and so there's still a couple of bots in there that are prototypes or some pieces that are prototypes in the combined form, but you can at least make out sort of like the the arms and the legs uh, on this one, and of course the 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 sort of the the giant face that will uh, you know. Um, eat everything but um it still is not a shape that appeals to me but it look i'm 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 happy for it to appeal to someone it will just never be my cup of tea yeah, i gotta I admit respect, when I, I respect what it's doing at least yeah when i saw pictures of this uh originally you know the article <laughs> i legit thought they were trying to make a g2 devastator <laughs> because of the giant <laughs> all, all, the, all the blue yeah, <laughs> and I was like, "Why the f would you do that to a movie verse character?" Yeah. yeah well, I mean, it's weird. not like you can get much worse. Well, I can. Well, third party well, companies. The next part of it. Um... <laughs> third party companies will be coming out with a scrotum accessory. Oh god! <laughs> you, you, the, I can't even respond to that as a joke. I think yeah, Jason's I'm, trying to I'm, find no, that it's not there. <laughs> I, no, no, I know, I know it's not there. Um, but I, I just thought your joke was a load of balls. But yeah. <laughs> oh God. Done <laughs> <It's> nap. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, so yeah, look, um, feelings have not really changed on this. Uh, like, like I said, not not interested. Not going to pick any of them up. But yeah, sure. I mean, if you if you're in for it, you're probably going to enjoy the combined form anyway. Yeah, as a as someone that's not interested in in the studio series line, this just looks like a huge hunk of plastic. And since I just pre-ordered uh, Unicron from the twenty twenty one release, speaking of huge hunks of plastic, yeah, I think I've got my huge hunk of plastic quota met, so I don't need to worry about this. Fair enough, too. Yeah, yeah. That's sort of the end of the official news. We've got a couple of third-party stories to talk about. Uh, Iron Factory is Iron Factory is about to bring their um, their little exhaust character to market. It's I mean it, it's pretty standard Iron Factory. But at least he's got a, a better sort of more recognizable um, more recognizable vehicle alt mode. Uh, we, a bunch of us said at the the Sydney meetup last week. We sort of all informally agreed that Iron Factory actually needs to sort of pick up their game uh, compared to companies like New Age now. Uh, as, as you know, I'm very fond of my New Age Jazz. I've also got the I've also got the Cosmos and uh, their Megatron, and there's plenty of other figures that they've released as well that I'm thinking I may have to go and get. But um, it, Iron Factory really often the point where Iron Factory is falling behind. Like that's not something you would have seen coming a few years back. Like, like it is, it, like no, you're you're right, but at the same time, Iron Factory is very samey. Um, like they've, they don't always use, they don't always use the same quality plastic that uh, other manufacturers do. Their plastics always got quite sharp edges, very angular and very a very matte feel to it. And their joint, their joints are always very very tight. And so, like you really got to really got to work their figures to sort of you know get them loose enough to pose properly. But I, I do find that they often, I do find that they often just serve up the same thing. It's like you know, there's, uh, th this is how we do legs, and like you know, we use the same same sort of join here, and then we just alter the shape that's on it for the mold and and things like that. They're they're they're, they're very very cookie cutter, but they often are sort of forced into using a Cybertronian mode as an alt mode. In this case. He's got an Earth mode alt, an Earth vehicle alt mode, and so I think, I think the alt mode is stronger for it. 
and I think his um, oh, that's loading, and I think his uh, his robot mode looks quite well articulated, which is again normal for Iron Factory, but also because of the recognizable alt mode, I think it's a it's a bit of a bonus on there as well. Yeah, uh, these Iron Factory ones. I've seen video reviews for Iron Factory. Are they all like the same scale, like a deluxe? Yes. They're, yeah. they're they're smaller than a deluxe. Um, yeah. They are they are essentially like people call them legend scale masterpieces, and I think that's not necessarily true given things that you sort of see New Age do in the medium. But um, yeah. they are they are very they're very nicely detailed figures still. But um, like I said, I feel like they've been treading water for quite a while. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'm just looking at um, that picture you just had with the hands. Looks like they might he might have interchangeable hands, which I think that's an no, Iron Factory. It's very common with Iron Factory to give you sort of a, an outstretched uh, a point and a, and a, an all fist to hold weapons as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, like you said, it's just like um, you know, paint by numbers. It's sort of transformed by numbers. <laughs> It's not necessarily transform. It's just like the, like the thighs all look the same, and the, the thing that attaches the thighs to the the lower leg all, always looks the same. And then, like, there's mold differences uh, apart from that. And so, like, I often pick up an Iron Factory figure and just think, oh yeah, you, you look like you look the same from one to the other. But yeah, maybe maybe times they are changing. We'll see. We'll see how we go. Oh my god! Like, I really am over. Um, I'm really over third party devastators. I'm over, I'm over devastators, and I'm over third party devastators from Revenge of the Fallen even more. So uh, we're looking at a, we're looking at a Compressor, which is uh, Revenge of the Fallen Overload. Now, this is from a company that I haven't really heard of before called Devil Savior, and you know what? That's actually quite impressive. Like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bits flying around there. I often find that third parties, I feel avoid the movie figures because they don't really want to have to do the extra engineering for all the kibble but this is very much a movie verse a movie verse-esque figure and uh no, it, it looks it looks pretty good for it so yeah mm, looks uh very very um getting that into a vehicle mode will be very impressive engineering wise <laughs> yeah i, I, I mean like it's the opening salvo from this company like i don't think they've done anything before so I mean, mm. i'm assuming that the designer at least has some experience but even so this is looking very promising for a first product so i gotta say like you say this is the opening salvo this is ds03 which means there's zero two and one but i'm not sure that we've seen them and the next i think they're the they the other devastator components that they're doing yeah i i, I wouldn't be surprised um so the other the other figure that they've got is called Landslip, and he's the uh, Revenge of the Fallen scrapper. Um, maybe we'll go for the actual the actual sort of. I guess these, uh, yeah, I, I guess these are photos of the prototype. But yeah, yeah, they yeah they got the stands and them. So is the combined form of these guys going to be called Troublemaker, or is that just maybe maybe because the, uh, Troublemaker was also. On the um, on compressor, the uh, the um, overload. So yeah, yeah, yeah maybe it's a good eye. Maybe 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 troublemaker is the combined form of uh, devastator. I mean, you can sort of you can sort of see how they how they arrive there, right? Yeah, I yeah. I would just love to hear Megatron say, "Form troublemaker." <laughs> <laughs> I want you to go and cause mischief. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, last story for tonight. Uh, we spoke a few weeks ago about the uh, Generations 2020 book that's uh, that's coming out. I don't know what I've managed to do there. That was not the that was not the button that I wanted to press. Um, so uh, the artwork has been the artwork for that uh, that book has been revealed. No surprise with Unicron figuring very heavily into. Hasbro and Takara's promotional efforts for the last few months. Unicron features heavily on the front cover of the book alongside the uh, some other Siege figures, although that, uh, that that Optimus Prime is looking a little bit masterpiece-like. So uh, this is uh, it's a, it's a bit of a photo book. It does come out once a year, and uh, the 2020 release is coming out in December. Wow. It's often, often a, lot of, uh, a lot of very pretty photos. It is uh, published by Hero X. 
I suspect that this year might be the first year that you might be able to actually sort of go out and buy this quite easily. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, advanced buzz on it uh, on it this year, whereas in years gone by, like the book just sort of comes and goes, and no one really, well, not really, not no one, but uh, you know, the people who might be interested in buying it, they never they never even know that it happened. Are these the magazines that come with like a rare? Uh, not rare, but you know, like a collectible toy, like a repaint, or is this a, a different magazine line? No, so um, these are these are more of a catalog. Oh, um, okay. Like, like they they they're kind of like a catalog, but um, they're just you know nicely photographed, um, nicely photographed toys. Um, obviously, they've got official access; it's officially licensed. So, yeah. yeah, they're looking um, like you can you can tell you know, Deeds Jetfire, Deeds Omega. Mm -hmm. I'm, I kind of agree with you, uh, MP44, but also maybe Earthrise Optimus, or is it too early? Um, um, I, 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 either, either one. I mean, it's, it's, the it's the 2020 edition, so I probably would represent Earthrise, but yeah. Yeah. The, the chest um, the chest area feels very MP44 to me. Um, beyond That's what that, I'm doing, it yeah. just sort of feels like generic Optimus, really. Yeah, true. That is it for the news. Um I don't. Uh, I don't actually have. I mean, I'm just going to. I'm going to bring us out in news mode. I'm going to put us back. There we go, side by side. Um, I don't actually have any new acquisitions. Like, like not to show off. I do have. I do have the uh, changeables number one and number five. But uh, I don't really. Don't really feel the need for. Go on, shows. show them. I can't. Show them. They're in the other room. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> Fair um, enough. How How are you guys going? Do you, Do you have any uh, acquisitions to speak of? I do indeed. Um, granted, despite the extended absence, it is just for one. However, you know, you've got to save money around a place. But, you know, you do have to treat yourself on occasion. And I have treated myself very much with uh, the DX9 slash Unique Toys. Uh, La, uh, La 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 it. <laughs> but it's, it's a, you, you, you were very fond of the um, the uh, Black Mamba uh, lockdown too, weren't you? Uh, the Black Mamba one. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, oh, no, yeah. I was pretty fond of the Unique Toys one. Hmm, okay, yeah. Um, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe it was it was Unique Toys. Uh, yeah, Perukil. Yeah, it wasn't Black Mamba. Right. Yeah, Perukil. So yeah, like well, every time I know this is a different figure, but every time I see this, I just I see this like a very similar thing. They <laughs> are. You know, this does feel in line with the previous Unique Toys releases. So, you know, Unique Toys, um, they've been going for those sort of later movie iterations of characters and really trying to hit those home. Um, and I've, I've got their Lockdown and their Prime already. This guy, those two figures previ that they previously done, you know, absolutely blew me away. Like two of the best pieces I've ever owned. This mm -hmm. guy is, um, he doesn't have quite the same transformation magic as those other two. Um, his transformation is good, but it's not incredible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but what he does to make up for is being a, a lot more poseable than the other two. So, whereas the others were kind of limited in what they could achieve, this guy is basically figure arts poseable. You know, he's got this massive, great uh, range of motion, his hips there, he's got an ab crunch, you know, all your standard, um, like all the ankle and wrist articulation you could want. So he's essentially going to be able to do whatever you want him to do, which is, you know, while it, the transformation was a big selling point of the previous two figures, this guy does bring a lot to the table. Yeah, right. Good. And yeah, it's nice to have a proper, like a proper representation of this character as opposed to what we got in the TLK toy line. And, uh, you know, seeing how this line is progressing gets me very excited for their take on Megatron. That should be coming quite soon. All right. Bradley. Hello. Uh, um, I have a few. I, I'm uh, going to say, say for, for time-wise, let's pick two. Two? I've only got three. Oh, you said <laughs> a few. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got, of course, Steve's Jetfire, who is... I have realized I need to open my Jetfire. I have not yet. You... You definitely need to. This yeah. toy is amazing, and he's a lot of fun. Um, bit fiddly to transform at first, but once you sort of understand how the engineering works, then it's a pretty easy transformation. 
Um, and of course, can I get him? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, you've gone for the big bots. <laughs> wow. Okay. We are, we are we are looking at Siege Jetfire. Oh, not Jetfire. We're looking at Siege Omega Supreme in uh, in Bradley's in Bradley's hand. It doesn't actually fit in the uh, camera frame. No, it doesn't. Uh, and ha having seen him on the table at uh, at uh, dinner a couple of weekends ago as well, like um, he's really he's really impressive. He's he's got impressive transformation. He doesn't he doesn't really parts form very much. Um, and yeah, no, it's very 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 nice. Yeah, if, um, you're trying to make a supreme, especially. It's very difficult not to. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, a totally awesome figure. Um, I've got the little buddy that he comes with. I think it's Countdown. I got him mm -hmm. locked up in the leg there just because he's got... <laughs> don't want to lose him. No, well, yeah, don't want to lose him, and he's mm -hmm. pretty unremarkable. Um, but, yeah, I'm really happy to have Omega Supreme. I've had... Um, G1 Omega, and I've got Year of the Snake Omega, which has since gone into storage since this guy arrived. And um, nice yeah, if you're a fan of G1 Omega Supreme, definitely, if you can, uh, budget for him. Very recommended. Um, I did see uh, I did see a mention on Twitter this week that uh, Omega Supreme actually does have light piping behind his eyes. Yes, uh, he does. He has... Um, Oh, where are we? So you can see this little slit here. That's the light piping there. And I don't know. Hang on. That probably won't work. No. Uh, if, you, if you hold it behind his head, it should. Behind his head. Behind. <laughs> it is behind his head. Like, put it right behind his head. Like, next, like, touch his head. Yeah. Like, that's pretty much kind of what you have to do. Like, you can sort yeah. of see his eyes lighting up a little bit there. Yeah. <laughs> Like actually but, touching um, his head, <laughs> <laughs> not on top, behind it. For fuck's sake! <laughs> look, look how look honest. That. Honestly, it's like working with children or animals. <laughs> it's like in the Late Show. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so if you do get the um, you know the light piping to work and you're witnessing it in person, then you would swear that there were electronics in his head. That's how bright and how yeah impressive the light piping is. So yeah, definitely. Um, Worthy to be in your collection, especially if you like uh, nipple missile pods. But I mean, who doesn't like nipple missile pods? Yeah, I mean, like you know, like um, sure. <laughs> where, how, <laughs> where where have you been hiding those, baby? <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, that's what, um, what, what, what was it? You know, how did I miss those? <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, awesome toy, and, yeah, back to you, Jason. All right. Um, yeah, I got nothing. So um, just ignore just ignore me as far as acquisitions go this week. Um, and, uh, look, I'll be, I'll be back with a vengeance at some point. Uh, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping I'll find some cool stuff in Hong Kong, actually. Um, and after Hong Kong, I'm spending a few weeks in London for Christmas, so... Um, I'll be hanging out with some of the some of the locals and hopefully getting hopefully getting to go some Transformers meetups over there. We'll see how we go. Yeah, I'm hoping to get um, someone to go to Hong Kong and not come back with a suitcase of Transformers. So, well, I got to take I got to bring the suitcase of Transformers to um I got to bring the suitcase of Transformers to uh, London as well, where where it faces uh, a child who's into Transformers. So, like, I kind of need to hide things very well if I do that. But... All right, before we go. Um, it is the it is that time of year uh, since it is it's nearly December. The Christmas donation drive is on now. Uh, you can you can find a bunch of really really great prizes, including a masterpiece Black Arachnia, a pre order. She's out now. You'll you'll be able to get her pretty fast if you win her in the raffle. Uh, a Titan Titans Return Predator King, uh, a Voyager Blitzwing, Voyager Octane, and masterpiece Sunstorm and Acid Storm, the Toys R Us Hasbro exclusives, and a mint in box fans toys sea spray so uh if you if you enjoy if you enjoy your time in uh in tcca's uh forums listening to podcasts etc uh please please do sling us sling us five dollars as a donation it helps us do what we do we go out to conventions we set up tables and we meet transformers fans 
that stuff is unfortunately not free. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you if you enjoy your time here, please do support us. And just five dollars, uh, just a five dollar donation is enough to get you in the draw for one of those great prizes. That's it for the show. It might be it for the year. We'll see how people's availability uh, pans out over the next few weeks. But uh, well, that's it. Sometimes that's I would have one or two here and there. That yeah, yeah we'll see what yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, you might be able to slip an episode. Depends in if Hasbro just you know turns around and drops Scorpion knock on us. Uh, well, hopefully they don't drop Scorpion knock on him. Hopefully they place him neatly on a table in front no, he of would him. Have, like, see, he would have passed full tests. Yes, like just wear a hard hat and a hard <laughs> jersey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so look, uh, there may be another episode over the next couple of weeks. We'll we'll see how we go. But uh, in the meantime, thank you for listening. Uh, Whoever it is who's watching the live record, thank you for checking us out. Uh, you can find out more about these stories and more in the show notes posted to the uh, Facebook page and the Podbean site. If you want to get in touch with us, and please do, because we do love listener feedback, uh, we are in Transformers Collectors Club Australia on Facebook. That's the uh, discussion group. You can find us in all of the uh, all of the the general podcast feeds of choice and generally search for Australian Transformers Weekly and you will find us. We are a production of Transformers Collectors Club Australia, a registered club in Victoria run by volunteers who donate their time and money to make the club better for everyone. We want to connect Transformers fans around the country and we do it by engaging the collecting community, turning up to events, swap meets and uh, conventions and generally talking about Transformers with people there. Uh, you can find out more information, including affordable yearly membership options to show your support at transformerscca.com. Bradley, you are on Twitch. Would you like to read out your hilarious screen name? <laughs> I would love nothing more. It's at twitch.tv slash groovyguy0069. Just look for the big pair of legs without a twitching. <laughs> look for the big pair of legs with a joystick between them. Uh, <laughs> that is... <laughs> You can have that one. Thank you. That is it from us. Uh, thanks for listening. And uh, if this is the last show for the year, then Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and yours. And uh, we will be back with more Transformers news next time. time. Yeah. Next time. Next time. All right. Bye-bye. Toodles. Toodle Pipsky. Catch you later. <laughs>